بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله الحمد لله المحمود على كل حال ونعوذ بالله من حال أهل الضلال وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له الكبير المتعال وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله من جبله ربه على جمعال وكريم الخصال صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد فقد قال الله تعالى في كتابه العزيز يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما Dear respected brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made Juma obligatory upon all of us and has made of the essential messages of Juma, of the most basic essential messages of Juma, that we warn each other of Allah's punishment. Fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is an essential part of our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We love Allah. We have tremendous hope in Allah, we call upon Allah, but we all must fear Allah. In every single khutbah, it is incumbent upon every khutib to warn every single person, every single believer, to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in, in his mighty book, O oh, you who have believed, O oh, of you about whom faith, iman, Knowledge, conviction of in, in Islam is a fact. That's who you are. Ittaqullah, ward off Allah's punishment. Take the practical means to save yourself from the hellfire. Waqulu qawlan sadida and say something straight and direct. Do not lie. Do not say things that are not true. Do not behave in a way that is not true. Be true people. What will happen if I do that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Everything will become fine. He'll sort it all out for you. Everything will become great. When you go straight with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will be fine. Don't worry. Right? Don't worry. Just as we know in the, in the law, if you run away from the scene of the crime, you accidentally drive into somebody, you run away from the scene of the crime, what happens? The police start to ask questions. Why did you run away? What were you running from? Did you, was it murder? Was it this? Same thing with the last Pantala. Don't run away from the scene of the crime. Straighten things up. You know what's wrong in your life? Straighten it up. All of us who know what we have to correct. Find that thing and straighten it up. Just do it together. We'll make it work out. But you don't think that we'll do it. It's all going to be forgiven. Don't worry about it. Allah will look over it. He has no no need to keep an account. Because he has no need to keep an account. And whoever obeys Allah checks in the Quran is what I'm doing halal or haram. And checks his messenger, the Prophet is is my is what I'm doing correct according to what the Prophet told us to do and told us not to do. And he's already succeeded. He's already achieved to an amazing benefit and safety. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us in the Quran, وَمَنْ يَعْشُ عَنْ بِرْرَحْمَانِ يُقَيِّضْ لَهُ شَيْطَانًا فَهُوَ لَهُ قَرِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and whoever wanders around blindly, the word يَعْشُ in Arabic means, عَشَوْتَ إِلَى النَّارِ إِذَا اسْتَدَّدَّ إِلَيْنَا بِبَصِرٍ ضَعِيفٍ these Yaqshu, they are walking around and they're, 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 they're almost lost. They're, almost, they're on one, one inch away from being completely lost. They don't really know where they're going. They're 
one being away far from an dhikr rahman the dhikr of the rahman what does a dhikr rahman mean it means what allah is reminding you allah in his capacity allah with his attributes of rahma is reminding you for your own benefit reminding you what to do and you're wandering away distant from that and you're not having dhikr of rahman and you're not reminding yourself of rahman and you're not doing dhikr rahman you're not praying you're not fasting you're not where are you Mind is always in something else. So Allah says, Whoever wanders around blind, but just Allah says, We, that which we have a strength, Allah uses the word, the word Rahman for, for his, his Jamali side, soft and beautiful side. And it says, We, and now when you, you don't want to deal with Allah with his Rahman here, you don't want to deal with Allah in his, in his kindness and softness. And he's going to be, you're going to give you a shaitan, and he's going to be your buddy. He's going to be following you today at the end of your life, helping you do more and more haram, helping you do according to kufr. May Allah protect us all. So it's not my way or the highway, it's Allah's way or the highway. And Allah's way is always open. You go away, you come back. 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 You're only going to die. So it's a risk. It's a risk to the people that the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the, the door of Rahman, the door of Toba is always there. You can always turn to Allah. But when is it that your end is going to come? When is it going to be too late? That's a question for all of us to ask. May Allah protect us all. And so we have to look into our lives. Do our lives conform to the book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet or not? And if it doesn't, where does it? Sit? That's our job. Financial level, on a work level, on a family level, on a internal level, on a personal level. What is you doing personally? It's haram. What is you doing in your family? It's haram. In terms of work, it's haram. In terms of your business, it's haram. Find out. If you don't know, then answer. Then let me from here. Then we there. Then yes, then whoever doesn't know that that do details in class. Then let me do. I'm the man for your hadith. Whoever one can't find anybody to answer your question, you better go find it. You are responsible to find these things out. You either have to have people to answer. You have to have people to answer. Now, I've been here in America now, just from Jordan and the Middle East. I've been here now for three, four months. And the desperate need to have local ulama is blatantly obvious to me. MashaAllah, every day I'm calling up scholars in different countries. Can you help me out with this answer? Can you help me out? I'm asking you. Need people here. Here, American ulama, somebody who's who's grown in your grew up in your street, went through the same difficulties that you saw, and he knows exactly what life is like, and he can give you the exact answer for what you're talking about. He knows the exact financial, technological, social, whatever it is scenario. They can deal with it, and it's not just secondhand fatwa. It's here, homegrown. But that will not exist. That doesn't happen if we are not trying to find answers. The circle is like this, you try to find an answer, you don't find an answer. You get frustrated, you try and find a scholar. You can't find a scholar, you bring a scholar. And then you realize the next generation needs scholars, you have your children study, etc. It goes like that. But if we don't care, we don't ask questions, because we're not interested in the Rahman. We're not interested in what does Allah want to tell me. And my relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all the aspects of my life, then I won't know what is halal haram. And we'll never know what's halal haram, we just keep going. And who knows, inshallah, Islam will last a generation, two generations, and then it will just be this nice thing that we used to remember. Some people do postcards, mashallah, there used to be a mosque here or a community center here, MCC, mashallah, and that's it. There is no guarantee Islam will remain. There is no guarantee that Islam will remain. The only way that it can remain is that each and every one values it applies it and takes the practical steps to make sure that it exists in the next generation. If we don't have ulama, we don't have ilm, we don't have people who know the technical things, what are the intervals of a khutbah? Then how are we going to khutbah? If I don't know, and he doesn't know, and she doesn't know, then how are we going to do the khutbah? The most basic thing in most of our lives is saying, okay, fine, mashallah, pray five times a day, and I pray Jumma. But I don't even know how to do Jumma. So then how are we going to have Islam? How are we going to have Islam? How are we going to do zakat if we don't know the details of zakat? It's impossible. 
This lamp cannot be applied in detail without knowledge of the details. Right? And so, uh, this is an essential part uh, of our deen. And Allah subhanahu wa says, in the context of jihad, if you can imagine you are in Medina, you are in Medina and you are a little city in a little community and you are under attack. It is obligatory on every single man to get up and defend this country. And what is this little village, basically, in Medina? It's a village, not even a city yet, really. And Allah subhanahu wa says, مَا كَانَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لِيَنْفِرُوا كَافَةً No, don't all go and fight. Don't all defend your village. Why? We're going to die. We're going to be erased. What's going to happen? لَوْ لَا نَفَرَ مِنْ كُلِّ فِرْقَةٍ مِنْ طَائِفَةٌ طَائِفَةٌ مِنْ كُلِّ فِرْقَةٍ مِنْ طَائِفَةٌ Why does it one or two of you, okay, all of you go and defend the village, one or two of you stay behind, to learn about the details of the religion. To learn about the details of the religion. Some of you heard a hadith and the other one didn't hear it. Some of you understood the hadith, some of you didn't understand it. These are important things that all of us need to know, but not all of us know. So we have to learn. We have to create systems within our communities. That one or two of us, three of us, somebody, somebody in our community is learning. So that we have someone to ask. So I have somebody to ask, and I know that this person generally knows, generally knows my scenario. And I'm talking about this reality here in America, a social level, cultural level, whatever it is, he can give a real answer. It's a real answer. I feel like this is this is this is this is the deen of Allah in, in respect to me, as opposed to a second hand answer from Afghanistan or from Pakistan or from Middle East. Okay, with all due respect to the ulama, they're ulama, but they don't necessarily know and feel what's happening here. It's very important. Uh, so they should warn. Notice the concept of fear. Islamic education is not about facts and concepts and really beautiful philosophical things. It's about fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I genuinely fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concerning what I'm doing in my life. And I'm concerned about my relationship. Am I offending Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by doing these things? Am I throwing myself into the hellfire by doing these things? I'm genuinely scared. That they themselves might also be, be wary, be careful, be careful of this. Uh, and so, what is it? It's an oblig obligation on every single one of our community. We have to, in our community, we have to have knowledge, objective knowledge, not just imani talks. Imani talks are very important. That's the kind of talks you have with your kids or other people. It's just an imani thing. I need facts. Tell me the details of Zakat. Tell me the details of contract, uh, an employment contract of inheritance. We need details. Otherwise, where's the deed? It's just going to disappear. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> إن الله خبير بما تعملون. الله سبحانه وتعالى has said in the Quran, O you have believed, fear Allah, let every single one of you look very carefully to what is put forward for tomorrow. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ and fear Allah. Allah is fully aware of every little thing you keep doing. اللهم لا تصلت علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافنا ولا يرحمنا. اللهم ارحمنا فإنك بنا راحم. ولا تعذبنا فإنك عنا إنا نسألك الشفاء لا يراد وسقط اللهم إنا نسألك الشفاء لا يراد وسقط يا رب الناس يا رب الناس يا رب الناس أذهب الباس أذهب الباس أذهب الباس صلى الله على وفر المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منكم والأموات وارحم موتانا واشف مرضانا صلى الله على سيدنا محمد على آله وصحبه وسلم أقم الصلاة